In the video today, I will explain the sales rebate process and the related accounting entries. Let's take a quick example. I am the owner of a company and I would like to increase the sales of one of my products. So I reach out to one of my customers and I tell him, if you buy from me this product within the month of May for the total value of 10,000 USD, I will give you a discount of 10%. And if you buy the total value of 5,000 USD, I will give you a discount of 5%. And this is the rebate agreement. So this is an agreement between the company and a specific customer that if he buys a certain product or products within a certain period, he will get a discount at the end of the period. So in my example, I will start the process by creating a condition contract. And the contract will include all the details I just mentioned. The product impacted, the customer impacted, the validity period, the repaid percentage, and the target sales to be achieved. Then within the month, the customer is going to buy the product from me. And at the end of the month, at the end of the contract, I'm going to check his account and see what is the number he achieved. So let's say, for example, he achieved a total of 7,000 USD. So now he is entitled to getting 5% discount. So we multiply 7,000 by 5% and this gives us 350 USD. And this amount we are going to deduct from the balance of the customer. Now let's look into the accounting entries of the process. When we create the condition contract, we don't have any accounting entries. And then when we do the sales transaction, we also don't have any financial entries related to rebates. Because remember, the rebate discount is only applied at the end of the contract when we check the total value that the customer achieved. So when we do the sales transaction, we don't post any rebate discount. Then at the end of the contract, we do the contract settlement, and here we see the number he achieved, and here we have a financial entry. So in my example, the financial entry will be a debit to the rebate expense for 350, and a credit to the customer accounts receivable balance for 350. So far, the process is very simple, and I don't like this. So let's make it a little more complicated. Let's go back to our example, and this time, the condition contract will not be only for the month of May, but will be for May and June. So I will create the contract today, and the end of the contract will be 30 June. And in 30 June, I'm going to check the total number that the customer achieved, and I'm going to post the rebate expense. Now let's look back into our process. So we start the process today by creating the condition contract with no financial entries. Then we process the different sales transactions, also with no financial entries that are related to rebate. Then we get to 30 May, and here we have to process the period end closing. And according to the matching principle, any revenues and expenses related to each other must be reported in the same accounting period. So the rebate expenses related to the sales revenues reported in May must also be reported in May, even though we still don't know if the customer will achieve the target or if the customer will get the discount. But still, we have to report a part of the expected rebate expense in May with the sales revenue. So the financial entry will be a debit to the rebate expense account and a credit to a rebate accrual account instead of the customer. And to calculate the value of the rebate accrual, we are going to multiply the number of sales that the customer has achieved. So for example, let's say the customer achieved 3000 USD. So we multiply 3000 USD by an accrual percentage. The accrual percentage can actually be different from the rebate discount percentage. So in my example, the rebate discount can be either 5% or 10% based on the achievement of the customer. But the accrual rebate percentage is only 3% because the accrual rebate percentage is determined by the accounting department based on different criteria. In my example, I'm going to multiply 3,000 by 3%. So now we have 90 USD of rebate accrual for May. So the financial entry will be a debit to the rebate expense account for 90 and a credit to the rebate accrual account for 90 USD. Then we continue the process with the different sales transactions that happen in June. And at the end of the contract in 30 June, we are going to check the total achievement of the customer. So let's say the customer achieved 7,000 USD, and then this means he is entitled to 5% discount. So we multiply 7,000 by 5%, we get 350 USD. But this time, before we post the rebate expense, we have to reverse the total accrual amount. So we are going to have two financial entries. The first one is debit to the rebate accrual account and a credit to the rebate expenses for the total value we have in the accrual. And the second financial entry will be a debit to the rebate expense account 
and the credit to the customer account for the total value of discount he earned. Now, if we look into the net financial impact due to all of these financial entries, we have the rebate accrual account with a balance of zero and the rebate expense account with a total value of 350 USD split between May and June based on the sales revenue values. And here we are completely compliant with the accounting standards. In the next video, I'm going to run this full process on SAP s hana The video will be available next week, but I'm giving early access to the channel members. So if you are a channel member and you would like to check the demo today, then please click on this link. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.